Hey guys, how's it going? It's been a little while since I did an information video rather than just opening some packs, but a couple of days ago Pokemon made an announcement about a change to some promo cards. Because of this, I thought I'd do a video touching on that subject and giving a history of the different types of promo cards that we've had in the Pokemon TCG. The first English language promo ever released for the Pokemon TCG was the red-cheeked E3 Pikachu. It was a shadowless Pikachu from the original base set, which had been stamped with an E3 stamp and was given away at the E3 convention. This started one of the first major types of promos that were out there, stamped promos. Now these cards are reprints from sets, retaining the original set symbol, original set number, just that they have a stamp or a symbol on the card. Sometimes the cards are physically stamped after printing to add a new mark to it. Sometimes cards are reprinted with an additional symbol, such as at city championships and events like that. Stamp promos were used for lots of different reasons, uh, from pre-releases to different tournament level events, and even just miscellaneous promos, such as when Wizards released them with the W stamp. The other type of promo that we saw starting early on with the game was a Black Star promo. These promos were denoted by a black star where the set symbol would be, and an individual numbering system, so they were separate from all other sets. The numbering on black star promos did differ and change, usually with the release of a new generation of Pokemon, so it's not all one huge set, but we are still getting a lot of black star promos all the way up to now, uh, with recent years just seeing more than ever. The last ongoing promo type that was introduced when Wizards of the Coast still ran the game was the Jumbo promos. These cards can't be used in any sort of competitive tournament, and they're really just a collector's item, although the collector market is a lot smaller than that of regular sized cards. The vast majority of English printed jumbo cards have just been reprints of cards from sets, as opposed to in Japan where they have a lot of different and exclusive designs for jumbo cards. Moving into the Nintendo era, Nintendo tried a few different things with promos, as well as restarting the numbering on the Black Star promos. One thing they started was the Pokemon Organized Play series. These were promo booster packs that you could get from Pokemon Leagues and various different events, each with two cards in of a 17 card set. These proved popular and additional sets were added, with nine total pop sets being released over the course of their run. All cards within the pop series booster packs were non-foil, however some foil versions were released later. And that takes us on our next type of promo. Foil versions of cards that weren't originally foil. These were mainly released exclusively for Pop Series cards, along with a couple of Black Star promos. These cards we found in products such as tins and blister packs, and were just foil versions of cards that were originally non-foil. Later, starting with the Hot Gold Soul Silver series, pre-release promos did start to also be hollow stamped versions of cards which were non-hollow in the set. In recent years, the practice of giving out foil versions of normally non-foil cards has fallen away, and this has been replaced by alternate foil promos. As Pokemon changes era, often the foil types on cards will change, so the cards that are foil in a set will look different to the ones from previous eras. Alternate foil promos are promos where they reprint a foil card, but using a different type of foiling to the one within the main set, often a type of foiling that had been used in a previous era. Although there were great numbers of these produced over the last few years, they weren't very popular with collectors. Due to there being no exclusive artwork, and due to them just retaining the set numbers, it was actually quite hard to keep track of which ones had been released, because often there would just be extra blisters added, and it would be hard to find out what was being released where. The last type of promo I want to mention before we move on to the new announcement are unnumbered promos. Now, these don't actually occur very often. They are almost exclusively just for the winners and high placing at the World Championships, the number one, two, and three trainer card, come unnumbered. The only other real instance of unnumbered promos were the victory medals that were given out of Battle Roads before they were replaced by the numbered victory cups. And now on to Pokemon's new announcement. There is a set coming out in Japan called the Best of XY set, which reprints a lot of cards from the XY series, sometimes with things like extra full arts or alternate art. Now, short of actually printing the full set in the rest of the world, it was going to be hard for Pokemon to release these cards, because if they released them as promos, it would mean that the cards would no longer rotate out of standard, and that's not really what they wanted to be doing. They also didn't really want to release the set, because either the whole set would have to be legal in standard, which didn't solve the problem, or they would have to have a set on their shelves which was not legal in standard even from its first printing, which is not something they really want because it's confusing to new players and people are not going to be happy if they find out they spent money on brand new cards that they can't actually use in the majority of their games. So they've come up with a solution. Any card that's reprinted from a set as a promo with exclusive artwork is going to retain the original set symbol and will retain the original number, but with an A added to it, along with an A in the corner of the card. This means that the card technically has an exclusive collector number compared to its 
other counterpart with the original artwork, but it means that the card is still part of the same set and will still rotate out at the same time. Now, while on the surface this does seem to be a really good decision, I'm still remaining a little sceptical until we see some of it actually put into action. Uh, I don't know whether this is just going to mean that we get more promo cards overall, or whether it's going to re be replacing some of the uh, alternate foils that are coming out, which is kind of what I personally hope is going to happen. But Pokemon does seem to have hit under a really interesting, good idea here, so hopefully they can see it through, hopefully uh, nothing's going to go wrong. I will try and do a video once these are released so we can see how they actually look and how they fit into sets. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick look back at the various types of promos we've had over the years, as well as looking at the new announcement for promos we're going to get in the future. If you'd like any more information on any of these, be sure to leave me a comment, and also let me know if there's any more information style videos you'd like to see, something you'd want me to talk about, or if there's just any products you want me to be opening in the near future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.